Yeah. That's all right. Hi, I'm Brady Johns. I'm JB Burkle. We are here at Archibald High School to cover the Archibald versus Columbus Grove football game. And something notice, notable about Columbus Grove, Brady, they're 0-3 versus the NWAL lifetime. Their quarterback, Blake Reynolds, has 1,255 passing yards on the year. He has 12 touchdowns and one pick on the year. He's 17 of 28, or he was 17 of 28 with 197 yards and one passing touchdown against Tenora. Also, one person to keep your eyes on is Reese Verhoff, their kicker. You just saw him kicking 55-yard field goals. Yeah, if it comes down to it at the end of this game, if it comes down to a field goal, I, I tell you what, Columbus Grove's in a good spot. I mean, this guy can hit from about 50, 55. He's a beast. Yep. from the Archwood American Legion Post 311 will present the colors on the 50-yard line as the band performs America the Beautiful. The senior trombone soloist tonight is Kate Knopfsinger.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please stand. Gentlemen, remove your caps. Veterans, you may salute the flag with your caps on as we honor America and those who defend our freedoms with the playing of our national anthem. Two minutes till game time here in Archibald. I like to wish everybody out there a very happy Halloween. action. Girls soccer advances to regional. They play Eastwood Tuesday. Today they won 2-1 to one in overtime off of a goal by Addison Moyer. Great job ladies.
congratulations to Kylie Souter advancing in girls cross country today. Great job, Kylie. is Brandon Taylor and Antonio Cruz, two leading receivers for the Blue Streaks. deep into the end zone. Yeah, we're seeing that big leg here early for Verhoff. Great kick into the back of the end zone. No chance for any blue streak to return it. We're going to see his leg all day. Possibly end up playing a big factor in tonight's ball game. And right, not many returns for Antonio and Brandon tonight. See how DJ can get this offense moving here to start off. We know what DJ is capable of. Leader of this blue streak team, no doubt. Times last week it was a little bit chippy against Carey in terms of getting the offense moving. We'll see how smooth it is today. Hand off to Caleb Holgrave. Caleb Holgrave cuts up and gets a gain of about seven yards. Nice opening play for the Blue Streaks there, wanting to get the running game going. See if they can rely on that throughout the rest of the game here. Shotgun for the streaks. He gets a snap and it's pass play. He looks for Carson Dominic. Nice He's little pass play balance. early on. Looks like it was not quite enough for a first down. Still a nice little play for the streaks though. Get Carson Dominic involved early. Good playmaker. Low snap and then Noah Gomez is rocked early by looked like Tad Coke there. Yeah, not sure it was in there, but he got blown up. That was a real nice play by the Columbus Grove defense to start the game. That's going to be huge for them if they can stop this blue streak running game all day. Yep. Blue right through. So now it's fourth down streaks. Looks like the streaks will be punting here. Back for the blue streaks, number 10, DJ Newman. And back to receive number 21 is Gabe Clemens. So DJ punts. And he's got a fair catch. Wave it off, and it is down by the blue streaks. As Gavin Bailey picks it up there. Good opening on defense for the Bulldogs. See how their offense can get cooking here. So after the blue streak punt, we'll see what Columbus Grove can get into. Yeah, taking over to about the 37 for Archbold. Taking about the whole width of the field on this formation here. And it's going to be a run up the middle, and he's met by Caden Alvarado and tackled by Carson Dominic, Carson Meyer, it looks like. Yeah, good tackling by the Blue Streak defense early on. It's going to be big for these guys going forward today. Interestingly enough, Carson Meyer and Caden Alvarado, the two leading tacklers for the Blue Streaks. Be ready to hear their names called a lot throughout the game. Carson just adding one there. He came into this game with 69 tackles. And Alvarado has 68. Let's see what Reynolds can get cooking for the Bulldogs. It's a pass, and he's looking for number 17 there. That is Brent Braylon Baxter. Is incomplete. Nice idea by Reynolds on that play. Couldn't quite be reeled in by Baxter. 
Ball got popped up in the air a little bit. If any streaks were around, could have potentially picked it off. No one in the area, though. So Columbus Grove, third down. Blake Reynolds is back in shotgun, and he takes a snap, and it's another pass. Looks like he's under pressure, and Charlie Krieger's chasing him, and he is throws incomplete. Carter Bainfelt was there. Nice pressure by Krieger on that play, getting off the edge. We've seen Charlie make plays all year. He has six sacks on the season for the Blue Streaks. Another big name on the defensive line for the Streaks. That pass was targeted for Jackson Schroeder. Carey trying to mix the run and pass early on. Going to have to boot this one away on fourth and seven. Antonio Cruz knowing the leg of Verhoff here. He's back a long ways, and that was a nice punt, too. Antonio's just going to let it go, but he's going to down it at like the one yard line. It was an incredible punt there. That's a beautiful punt by Verhoff. We've seen how, or we've talked about how he has a great chance to make an impact in this game. Beautiful punt down at the one. So far, it looks like Verhoff's having the biggest impact on the game for the Bulldogs. Columbus Grove really relying on their kicker and punter here. Great job by him. We'll see what D DJ can do back in the end zone for the streaks. See, they're probably going to go in shotgun, but big drive for the streaks here. If you can get out of the out of the uh, end zone, that'd be huge. You don't want to have to punt from back there. Right. So, flag is down. Let's go. It's going to be offsides. Actually, it looks like it's going to be a oh, false, false start, start on Cruz. Yeah. So. Yeah, I noticed him get a little jumpy. Maybe some early game jitters. These two teams have very good offenses. A couple of punts early on. And then just a little mental error by Cruz. Saw penalties hurt the Blue Streaks last week against Carey. We'll see what DJ does. He is going to run it, and he gets to about the two-yard line there. He looks like he got tripped up in the end zone. Luckily, he didn't go down in the end zone. Yeah, it's the last thing you want if you're Archbold is to give up a safety here to Columbus Grove. Definitely not the way you want uh, the Bulldogs to put points on the board. So Carson Dominic is running in for the streaks, receiving the call, play call from Coach Dominic. Last week against uh, Tenora, Columbus Grove played Tenora last week. Tenora scored runs from scrimmage of 80 yards and 96 yards. And they had 315 total rushing yards in that game. So we'll see what Archibald can do. If they can break out some big runs here for Noah or DJ. I'm sure that was talked about in film. His pitch to Noah Gomez. He's trying to get out of the end zone, and he looks like he's going to get a few yards. And he gets down about six or seven yard line there. Nice job to get something by Noah. Another great run by the senior running back for Archibald. Right, we mention all the time how despite the hit, he's always pushing through and getting a couple more yards. Yeah, absolutely. He's got 11 rushing touchdowns on the season. We'll see if he can add a couple tonight. Big third and four here for DJ early on. Looks like they're going to pass here. Newman is in shotgun. And he throws it to Carson Dominic, who's wide. Oh, he drops it. Incomplete pass. Yeah, that, that's a tough break for Archibald right there. If you're Carson Dominic, you need to reel that in. Got to shake it off, though. He's too big of a playmaker for the streaks to be getting bogged down on little plays like that. So it's fourth down now. Looks like they're going to punt. Two straight punts for the Blue Streaks. One on the last drive for. Talking about Carson Dominic on the year. He's got 11 receptions for 153 yards on the year. Definitely a playmaker for the Streaks. Newman receives the snap and ball is out of there. And it's down. By the Blue Streak, so now it is Columbus Grove ball. Yeah, that last drive was a big stop for the Bulldogs. Gives their offense great field position. No first downs yet in this game for either team. Right, not something you usually, you usually see while watching an Archibald football game. And Columbus Grove's offense is nothing to 
look at in a bad way either. They they can be powerful. So again, using the whole the whole width of the field as a handoff, and he's got some yards, and he's wide open there, and he's finally brought down at about the six yard line. Huge run there by number 27, Colin Metzger, for the Bulldogs. Big tackle by Noah Gomez to save the touchdown. But you're looking at the running game for Columbus Grove early on, breaking off a big 29-yard run right there. Now Blake Reynolds is going to run it, looks like, to about a two-yard, two- or three-yard line there. Good strategy if you're Columbus Grove. You break off a huge run on the last play, go right back to it, this time with Reynolds up the middle. Couldn't quite get into the end zone. Guessing they're going to go with another run here on second and goal. Blake Reynolds is in shotgun for Columbus Grove. He's looking to score. And he's going to run it in the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus Grove. Very easy going for Columbus Grove on that their second drive. You saw the first drive. Offense couldn't get anything going. They used the running game on the second drive to break off a one big gain, which led to great field position. This all started with a stop for Columbus Grove on that last drive for Archbold. DJ's punt set him up in fantastic field position. So that drive was three plays, 35 yards in 50 seconds for that big run there that got him into great scoring position. So that's Verhoff sending it over the, looks like it's close to over the fence, way back there. Even on his PITs, Verhoff's going to, He's going to put all of his leg into the, into the football. set to kick again for Columbus Grove. Yeah, Brandon my guess Taylor. is they're not going to let him return this one. Right. Brandon Taylor and Antonio Cruz are back there anyway. Yep, looks like they're not going to get it again. It's another one in the end zone, so it's going to be Blue Streak's ball. Try to make up for the two punts on their last two possessions. Yeah, this is a big drive for the Blue Streaks early on. You're down by seven points, seven minutes to go in the first quarter. We know how explosive this offense can be. Haven't shown much thus far. That's right. My guess is DJ will look to target Antonio Cruz again. We had a big game last week. So DJ takes the snap and he's rolling left. And he cuts back and looks like he's going to pocket and run. And he gets a few more yards there. Nice run by DJ. Looks like Caleb Branzo laid a nice block on that near side, allowing DJ to create something on that run. So again, nice run there by DJ. See Carson Myers in there for the snap. Ready to snap to DJ. DJ has Noah to his back left. He's ready. Sends Carson in motion, and it's going to be a handoff to Carson. Carson Dominic, he gets a few yards, and he's down at about four-yard gain there. Yeah, you mentioned Carson Meyer on the snap. We know he'd been dealing with a lingering injury all week. We weren't quite sure if he was going to be ready to go tonight because he's a huge piece for that arch below line. Numerous 
Newman sends Cruz in motion. He takes a snap and he passes to Cruz. Cruz is met by a large hit. Got mashed on that play. Number two for Columbus Grove with a huge hit on Cruz right at, at his lower half. Big defensive play early on. That was quarterback Blake Reynolds of that play, it looked like. Wow. Showing he can do it both ways there. So after that play, it's third down. Blue streaks ball. Newman is back alone in shotgun. We'll see if he can find his wide receivers here. He looks for Jaden Schultz, but it's is incomplete again. Tell you what, it looks like this Columbus Grove team came to play. They have all the momentum early on in this first quarter. Big defensive plays. Looks like that was Ezra Jones there. Columbus Grove's fan base, not very huge in numbers here today at the game, but they are loud. You can hear them all the way over here on the other side of the field. DJ's back to punt again. Three drives in a row. He lets one fly and looks like he is not going to receive it. Yeah, much better punt that time from DJ. Kept it low, kept it out of the wind. So hopefully for the streaks, they don't break out in a big run again, as that was the driving factor in last, last possession. So scores around the area. Obviously here it is Columbus Grove 7, Archibald 0, Fairview and Colonel Crawford, Colonel Crawford has six and Fairview has zero. So Reynolds hands it off to Columbus Grove looking like they wanted a horse collar on that play. Carter Bainfeld did look like he possibly grabbed him up there, but no, no flag on the play. So the streaks call a timeout. It's not really what they're looking for here in the first quarter. I think they had some problems with the substitutions. I saw Devin Moore sprinting off the field near side. Wanted to call a timeout and avoid the penalty. down. Blake Reynolds is back in shotgun for the Bulldogs. And he takes the snap and it's going to be a run again and he is stopped at the line. Good defensive response. They looked like Devin Morris was in on the tackle. Very much needed from the streaks defense. Another run there by Colin Metzger for the Bulldogs. He was the one that got the big gain last possession. So It's a pass play. He's looking deep. And he's got him, it looks like, but he overthrows him. Oh, he had him there. That was a, a nice throw by, or actually a little overthrown by number two, Reynolds, for the Bulldogs. Had his receiver open downfield, just not quite able to hit the throw. That was Gabe Clement, was the targeted receiver there. Obviously, it was overthrown, so now it is third and ten. Let's see what they decide to do here. The this play game. could easily swing momentum both ways, either for the streaks or for the Bulldogs. So Reynolds gets a snap and again, and it's going to be a pass. But he tucks it and he runs, and he is stopped short of a first down. Great job by Reynolds to get something out of that play. It looked like the streaks had a couple guys who could have gotten in, for, in there for the sack. It'll be 
So they're going to go for it here on fourth and one. My guess is they're going to hand it off to Metzger again. But he tries to get him off sides, and now they're going to, looks like they're going to call a timeout and decide to punt, maybe. But they do not do that, and now Reynolds is telling him to play. He's got 10 seconds left. Yeah, plenty of time on the play clock still. Yep. So it looks like he is going to punt it after all that, and he gets he gets a roll. Takes a bulldog bounce there down to about the 24. Confusing little set of, set of moments there. Interesting strategy for Columbus Grove early on. I guess they don't want to risk it around midfield with the fourth and one play call. Big stop for the Blue Streaks defense. So passing has not been a very big part of this game so far. Archibald is leading the passing game with one yard to Columbus Girls zero. DJ Newman takes it and he's down. Looks like he got a couple yards there, but he's tackling by Jackson Schroeder for the Bulldogs. We all know how hard it is to tackle DJ Newman when he's running that football. We'll see what the Blue Streaks do here on second down. Newman is back in shotgun again. He sends Antonio in motion. And it's a pass, and he's looking for Antonio. He finds Antonio, and he is brought down at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this tackling for Columbus Grove is very impressive. They are wrapping people up, not letting guys get yards after contact. John Banal in there with the tackle, if I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. So what we thought was going to be the weakest part of Columbus Grove's game is actually one, proving to be one of their strongest here, their defense. Third and six for the streaks. DJ Newman gets the snap, and he's looking. He decides to run, and he gets. He might have gotten the first down. Looks like he had enough. See where the official spots it. Big run by DJ either way. They We're are saying the he got the down. first down. His father Doug gets to move the chains on the far side. So it's first and ten for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, the Streaks offense couldn't buy a first down early on. We'll see if this sparks any rhythm for Archibald. Newman gets the snap again, and he is going to pass it. He looks for Caleb Holgrave, and Holgrave catches it. Same incomplete. Nice effort by Caleb on that play. So it's incomplete pass there. Very quiet here in Archibald. And yeah, not as many fans this year. Obviously, you can still feel the playoff atmosphere on a quite brisk Halloween night, I might say. And Newman hands it off to Noah Gomez. Noah Gomez goes up the middle. It's brought down. At about five yard rush there, it looked like. Looks like they're setting the ball down at probably the 40. Gets the streaks about third and four, they're saying. Archibald's one for four so far in third down conversions. We'll see what they can get going here. Newman looks for Carson Dominic, who catches it this time for a first down. Yeah, I was talking about Carson earlier. He dropped the pass at the beginning of the game. That time he reels in a big third down catch. Nice job by Carson to bounce back for Archibald. Right, he's a key factor for the Blue Streaks offense, so it's good that that incomplete catch didn't get in his head. He's still playing. So Newman gets the snap, and he looks like another pass play, and he finds Brandon Taylor deep. 
and he's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, first time we've seen DJ kind of let one fly early on. Looked like that was about a 14-yard completion to Brandon Taylor downfield. So great look by DJ there. Hopefully it'll get things going for the Blue Streaks. Obviously passing is a huge part of the Blue Streaks yeah. offense. Yeah, we know we have that, he has that arm strength downfield. Right, so he's rolling right again. And he's going to find Brandon Taylor again. And Brandon is taken down again out of bounds. Tell you what, if you're Columbus Grove's defense, you do not want to let DJ get in rhythm. They had a great start defensively, did the Bulldogs. But now the Blue Streaks starting to get some tempo going. They went with a little no huddle offense there. Looks like a different formation here. Caleb Holgrave is in quarterback. Looks like he's going to wildcat. He runs up the middle, and he slips. So that was only about a one or two yard gain. This trip down didn't look like it was going to matter. It looked like the Bulldogs had defenders ready to converge on Holgrave. David Dominic mixing it up a little bit for the Blue Streaks. One yard run. The ball is second down. I think they're going to let the clock run out for the first ha for the first quarter. It's 10 seconds left and 17 seconds left on the play clock. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to let anything else go here. So Blue Streaks, nice way to end the quarter there, get a little bit of momentum. Still trailing 7 nothing to the Bulldogs, who came out of the gates hot. Yep. Really impressive start for Columbus Grove. Mother Ohio scores. Down in Southwest Ohio, West Jefferson and Coldwater are playing. Coldwater is leading 14 to nothing. And Adina and Mechanicsburg. <laughs> Mechanicsburg is leading 14 to nothing. And then Northeast Ohio, Mogador it looks like, and Springfield Local are playing. And it's tied up at zero in the first quarter there. And then Southeast, Barnesville and Fort Fry are playing. Fort Fry has 13 to Barnesville, 0. And Col Cole Grove and Fairland are playing. It's tied up at 0. Also in Northwest Ohio, Fairview and Colonel Crawford are playing. Col Colonel Crawford has 14 to Fairview, 0. So Newman sends Carson Dominic in motion, and it's going to be another pass. Carson Dominic had a nice block there, and he finds Gene Schultz for the touchdown. What a pass by DJ, floating it over wow. the top to Schultz, number 12. Big play for the Blue Streaks to get on the board and hopefully tie this thing up early on. So Schultz coming into this game was third in uh, receptions and first in uh, average catch, average yardage per catch. So obviously that helped him there. Columbus Grove got DJ to move out of the pocket. He rolled right, but a, just a nice throw, nice soft touch from DJ Newman. That drive was nine plays, 76 yards in three minutes and 57 seconds as Kern's field goal is good. So it is all tied up at seven here in the second quarter. Going to be a big day for Creighton going up against Verhoff for the Bulldogs. See if he can hang in there with number 81 for Columbus Grove.
We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Archibald Foundation for their generous do donation for PPE and technology to allow us to upgrade our equipment and continue to offer the community of Archibald a way to experience athletic and extracurricular activities during this challenging time. So Creighton Curran here set to kick for the Blue Streaks. Looks like Gabe Clement is there. And a few good blocks there for the Bulldogs, but he's taken down at about the 26-yard line. Nice special teams play by the Columbus Grove kickoff team. First time we've seen them out there today. Looks like it's going to set them up at about the 26. Blue Street's defense is looking to hold Columbus Grove. So Blake Reynolds is back from Columbus Grove. And he calls a snap. And he is brought down by... Devin Morris, it looked like. Nice Maybe play. Gavin Schaffner, too. Yeah, nice play by Devin there. Looks like he just grabbed Reynolds' foot on that play as Reynolds was ready to go through the middle. Good recovery, though, by number 59 for the Blue Streaks. So as of now, Devin Morris is third for the Blue Streaks in tackles. Yeah, here's a guy who just makes plays for Archibald day in and day out. It's like he got Charlie there. Yeah, he got him. Nice job by Columbus Grove. Yeah, nice job going to a different snap count there. Through the Blue Streaks D line out, off, and got five yards out of it. So now it looks like he's back in shotgun. Check the streak saw Another movement flag. there. Get those five yards right back. Funny how things work. The only thing that was lost was time there. So both teams with a couple of mental errors here early on. That makes the Blue Streaks feel better about themselves. And now it's like he's going to flip it to... Lemon there, and he gets it outside, and he's met by Caleb Holgrave, who brings him out of bounds. Real nice running by Clement there on that play to the far side, showing some good elusiveness, good speed for number 21. So it's third down, Columbus Grove. Ten minutes and 30 seconds left. It's tied up at seven here at Archibald. Columbus Grove's 0 for 2 on third down attempt so far. See what they draw up here. Big play for both sides with 10.30 to go. All right, so it's going to be a pass play, and he's looking for number 27 there. He's going to get him and more. Gets the first down and more, and he's finally brought down by Carter Bainfell. Beautiful little float pass by Blake Reynolds. You've seen both quarterbacks have great touch on the football. Nice play. Big pickup for the Bulldogs early on in the second quarter. Metzger there, 23-yard reception for the running back there. So that makes him one for three on third down conversions. He calls a snap and it's going to be a pass. Caleb Ranzal is there and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, looks like right through the hands of John Banal for, for Columbus Grove. We were noting earlier about the kicking game for Columbus Grove. They're not too far out of range right now. Vierhoff can boot that thing from about 60 yards out. In practice, he attempts those kicks. Second and 10 now. Just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. And Reynolds is set to take the snap. He hands it off to Metzger, and he's brought down by Carson Meyer. 
Nice running again there from Metzger. Columbus Grove keeps moving down the field. We'll see if the blue streaks can stiffen up. So another third down. Connected on their last one. Let's see if the streaks can stop them this time. And he calls a snap and he's going to take it for himself. And he looks like it's going to be very close, but he looks like he got it. I feel like he picked it up, yeah. Looks like he got plenty. And he did get enough of the first down there. Nice run by Reynolds. So Reynolds picks that up. Picks up the first down. Nine minutes and 30 seconds to go in the half. Streak seven, Columbus Grove seven. Yeah, we were we were assuming this would be a close game, Brady. I mean, these teams are both very elite in terms of the state of Ohio. They're very elite. So he's pushed out of bounds by Brandon Taylor. Looks like Archibald fans are calling, wanting the rest to call a holding, but they don't. Looks like Charlie Krieger maybe got held. I don't know. I didn't really have a good look at it. Can't really make a call on that one. So that was the eighth uh, play of the drive there. The ref's just going to let him play. Now Reynolds hands it off to Metzger for the first down. And they're marching down the field. Nice job of Metzger to keep pushing forward. He kind of trucked the Archibald defender. He was, he was pushing him. has 62 rushing yards here on seven carries early on. Modest little pick up there for Metzger. So second down as the Blue Streaks try to stop Columbus Grove's march down the field. Sending their wide receivers out wide, using the whole width of the field again. And Reynolds hands it off again to Metzger, and he's brought by he's Big met tackle. by Charlie Krieger. Charlie Krieger whacked him on that play. Nice job by number 18 for the streaks. And a nice tackle there by Charlie Krieger. Big play by Charlie. Hit him square on. And that's one of his jobs as DN is to meet him, meet the running back if he tries to go outside, which he did. One of the few times this drive we've seen the blue streaks actually be able to stop Columbus Grove. So it's third down now. Momentum is in the blue streaks favor now after that tackle. And Reynolds calls a snap and he's gonna pass and he looks like he's wide open. Number one there, Jackson Schroeder. Big play on cornerback Noah Gomez on that play. Number one Schroeder with a nice pickup. Looks like it'll be about first and about nine to go. By this point, if you're Columbus Grove, you're well in range for Verhoff. You're just looking to maintain possession and get points on the board. Especially going into the second half, that would be a big momentum booster for them. Obviously, coming to play Archibald on their home turf. So Reynolds keeps it for himself. He runs up the middle and is brought down. Something to note that Columbus Grove will get the ball at the start of the second half. Biggest thing here for the streaks, try and force a turnover. It'd be pretty heartbreaking for the Bulldogs. This is the 14th play on this long drive for Columbus Grove. They're doing a great job of marching down the field. So 
Metzger again. Looks like he got about two or three yards there on that on that rush. Six minutes left in the first half. Archibald has seven and Columbus Grove ha has seven. Columbus Grove looking to put some more points on the board here on this drive. Again, Carson oh, yeah. Meyer brings Grand. him down. Up wow. by Carson Meyer. That Great play great. by number 50. Huge play there. That's a big play. We were talking about the state of his health early on. It looks like he is just fine for the Blue Streaks. Number 50. As he has done all year long, making a huge play. Going into this game, he was the leading tackler for the streaks. I believe he still is. So, fourth down here. Looks like they are going to go for it. Blue Streak fans are stomping their feet. Do anything to get momentum here for the defense. Trying to hold them at the five-yard line. That would be huge for the streaks. And Reynolds looks back to pass, but he's met with pressure, and Taylor is back, and it's going to be incomplete. Taylor knocks it down in the corner of the end zone. Turnover on downs, huge defensive play by Brandon Taylor there. Great coverage. Nice pass by Reynolds right on the money, but Brandon Taylor, number five for the Blue Streaks, big playmaker, able to swat it away. The target was Jackson Schroeder there, who was targeted earlier in the drive and got that first down that they needed very badly, a big gain. We said Columbus Grove definitely could have kicked that football if they wanted to there. Reese Vierhoff was well in range there. They wanted to put seven on the board. So like we saw earlier in the game, Newman is back in the end zone. Trying to get out. And yeah, the streaks have not had very good field position to start this football game. He cuts up and he gets a few yards, so he's gonna get out of the end zone. Solid run for DJ just to create space so that they can run their offense. So we have 450 left to go in the second quarter. All right, they're not trying to get any big gains on that play. They're just trying to get it out of the end zone, get it out of their dangerous area. Obvious flag on the play there. Yeah. Yeah, mental errors killing the blue streaks early on. It's their third penalty of the game. Something left to clean up going into the second half. After the walk off, it'll be second and nine. So worth noting here, Noah Gomez only has six yards of rushing on three attempts so far. Obviously, we've seen him this year be such a threat for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, he's been he's been a centerpiece for this team all year long. Interesting to see that he has not been able to pick up many yards early on, and once again, they're just getting stopped early by this Columbus Grove defense. Two there for it. Notable that Noah had 106 yards rushing versus carry last week with two rushing touchdowns. And like we said, nothing doing for the star senior running back early on. So there's three minutes and 30, three minutes and 30 seconds left. It's all in the first half, it's all tied up at seven. And Newman is back in shotgun for the streaks, but they're gonna call a timeout, it looks like. Streaks only with one timeout left here in the first half. Could play a factor if they are able to march down the field. Streaks are two for five on third down. Big third and seven here. Coach David Dominic wanted to talk it over with his offense. So in that Fairview Colonel Crawford game, Colonel, Colonel Crawford is leading 21 to seven. It's the second quarter. Southwest games, West Jefferson and Coldwater. Coldwater's leading 28 to zero. 
Edina and Mechanicsburg. Mechanicsburg is leading 20 to nothing. Then Northeast games, Norway and Wycliffe. Norway is leading 7 to nothing. Magador and Springfield Local. Springfield Local is leading 14 to 0. And Southeast games, Barnesville and Fort Fryer. Fort Fry is leading 13 to 0. And Cole Grove and Fairland is 6 to 7. Fairland. So Newman is back to streaks again. He calls Dominic in motion. It's going to be a flag. Flag on the play. Columbus Grove not very happy about that. Columbus Grove coaches to the left of us are not very happy. We'll see what happens. Obviously, there's yeah, a not quite sure what happened. Miscue on the snap for the blue streaks, right. but maybe that was due to the penalty. I don't, I don't know here. I guess we'll find out. Everyone's be confused, but I think it was on Columbus Grove. Legal substitution for Columbus Grove. That's that's killer. I mean, they had a mishandled snap for the Blue Streaks. Looked like they almost were able to recover it in Archibald's end zone. It's notable that that illegal substitution was after a timeout, so miscues for both teams early on. Not sure what happened there, but Newman runs up the middle and he gets the first down. Nice run by DJ. So Newman posed a threat to both both rushing and passing. He's got about 65 yards on passing, I think. Yeah, the great thing about DJ is as soon as you start to really defend the rush, he will whip the ball down the field on you. Yep, so he has, he's seven for 10 for 62 yards, and he also has five rushing attempts for 26 yards. So improving his, his uh, ability to do both, do uh, all things for streaks, and he's rolling right now. Looks like he's going to pass, and he keeps it, and he's got a big gain. Big gain. Nice block from Taylor he's outside, and he looks like he's going to run out of bounds. A, kind of a late hit, and there's a flag for a oh, late hit. Oh, they did get him! Wow, I was wondering. I knew they were going to call that. Jackson Schroeder for Columbus Grove. Not very happy with that call. Big run from DJ. Huge momentum for the for the Blue Streaks. Obviously, there's two minutes and 30 seconds left. I'd like to show a little love to Brandon Taylor on that play. He had a nice block. Archibald coach is not very happy with Schroeder for the Bulldogs. It's a 42-yard rush for DJ. Blue Streaks get a sideline warning. Archibald fans are not very happy. I feel like you guys can hear that <laughs> through the broadcast. <laughs> so Newman is back. He looks like he's going to pass to Antonio Cruz. Oh, I thought he got it, but it is incomplete. He overthrew him by a little bit. That was an emotional roller coaster because at first I thought he underthrew it and it was going to get picked off. And then he ended up overthrowing it. So look at how much I know. <laughs> nice idea, though. Going to Antonio Cruz is never a bad idea. Right, it looked like he was going to find uh, Carson Dominic there. Carson Dominic was rolling right. Probably trying to draw Antonio's uh, defender up towards Carson, but he stayed with him. Every Archibald fan's heart rate goes up a little bit when DJ scrambles. I know we all trust him, but definitely makes things more interesting. To the incomplete pass, Newman hands it off to Noah Gomez. Noah Gomez cuts up, and he gets about five yards there. A nice little gain there by Noah. Very Spend good block by Carson Dominic. I saw him lay out. It looked like number 57, Clay Bonnell for Columbus Grove. Not quite a pancake block, but a... Nice piece of blocking from Carson Dominic. See if Columbus Grove's defense can stiffen up like they did in the first quarter. So new big guy in there for the Columbus Grove defensive line. But Noah Gomez gets a Few more, few more yards there on another rush. Looks like you can thank Ezra Jones. He kind of laid on him to pick up an extra yard there. So, Noah Gomez, they want to get him going. They know how much of a threat he can be, but Columbus Grove's doing a really good job of 
stopping him so far. He only has 13 yards on the game. So Holgrave back in the blue streak offense. Looks like he's going to be another back for the blue streaks. And he is. Looks like he's going to block. Not sure what this formation is, but he hands it off to Noel Gomez, and he's stopped, it looks like. Do not think they got it. That's a big stop from Columbus Grove's defense. And they are excited. They are getting hype. And rightfully so. That was a huge stop there. And now you give this Columbus Grove offense a minute and four seconds to operate. We'll see if Blake Reynolds is able to lead these Bulldogs down the field to get into field goal range for Verhoff. Something to look at. Talked about it early on. Blue Streak defense. Going to stop Columbus Groves. Blake Reynolds is going in there. He's only got seven seconds to call the play, so we'll see what happens. He draws somebody in motion, and the play is off. He hits a pass, and he's got a... Gavin Schaffner! Gavin Schaffner, Able huge to bring play. him down. Huge play there by Gavin Schaffner. Obviously, last week he had a few of those big plays against Carey. And he's showing it again tonight versus Columbus Grove. So number 72, Schaffner for the Blue Streaks. He's the foundation of their D-line. Able to wrap up Reynolds. Nice job. Columbus Grove uses a timeout here with 54 seconds left. They have two of those remaining. College games. Ohio State is leading Penn State 7 to 0. So Fairview just scored just to make it 13 to 27 in the Fairview Colonel Crawford game. Second and 14 after that Schaffner sack. So Blake Reynolds looking to do it again. Columbus, Grove. Sends. It's going to be a pitch. And it's going to be a trick play. And Devin Morris. Big play by Devin pressure. Morris. And he slips. That is number 21, Gabe Clement. Looked like they were going to pitch it. And then it turned out to be a trick play, pass play, and he tripped up. Big loss there. Yeah, Columbus Grove getting in the Halloween spirit, a little trick or treat, but no treat for the Bulldogs on that play. <laughs> nice job by the Blue Streaks. Third and 27, we'll see what Columbus Grove's able to whip up here. So again. Columbus Grove is three for six, 50% on third down conversions. Take a miracle to convert on this one. You know this Columbus Grove offense has big play ability, so the streaks cannot let up on third and 27. 44 seconds left to go in the half. Blake Reynolds backed up near the end zone for Columbus Grove. He almost Looks like some movement, get. yeah. More Looks movement like for the Blue there. Streaks. That's killing the Streaks early on in the first half. Obviously, they got yards to give on this third down, but still that's five less yards that they have to go. Four penalties for 20 yards for the Streaks. I'm sure the Archibald coaches will not hesitate to possibly scream at them at halftime. So it's a handoff. Metzger again. And looks like he's going to be brought down by Charlie Krieger. 
tripped up by Carter Bainfelt. Nice job by Krieger and Bainfelt getting in there. Clock is ticking, 27 seconds and counting. So obviously, Columbus Grove has possession of the ball coming out of halftime. Streaks cannot stop the clock, no timeouts left. Looking like Columbus Grove's not even gonna bother on fourth and seven. And that will take us to the half with a tie game. Very good one brewing in Archibald on this fine Halloween night. In the 2020 in the 1978 film, Bond, Freddie Mercury discovered that while watching the Tour de France from his bathtub, that one of the fastest, cleanest ways to get Bond is by riding a bicycle. And he rapidly penned the song, Bicycle Race. On the way,
just so bad as long as you don't want to leave. Because that's why these harvests are too long or too long. It's no good to leave it alone in some way. In spite of that point, the sentiment, Kelly Clarkson found out she could so move on. Once her man got there, she called it her in her independence anthem that would be gone, she could move for the first time. Ouch! Within that summer of it off, the suit band can move for the first time too. They perform since he's been gone. Just when you thought the band might be gone, this is a special Halloween night trick or treat. Enjoy the back to back performances of Queens, Don't Stop Me Now, and Michael Jackson's Chilling Halloween favorite, Whirler.
gentlemen, the Artful Gracie Apache Band.
Welcome back to Archibald High School. I'm Brady Johns. And I'm J.V. Burkle. And we are here to bring you the Archibald versus Columbus Grove football game. It is tied up at 7 going into the third quarter. 30 seconds left until they do so. Yeah, surprisingly low scoring game early on for both teams. We know that both Columbus Grove and Archibald have very potent offenses. Right, it is evident that Columbus Grove has been watching film. Looking at the total yards for both teams, Columbus Grove with 124, Archibald with 169, time of possession, streaks leading by about two minutes and 36 seconds. Two weeks ago, when Archibald played Gibsonburg, Archibald led, I mean held, Gibsonburg to 75 yards the entire game, so just after a half, the Bulldogs have surpassed that by about 50 yards. Back deep for Columbus Grove, we have number one. So we have Creighton Kern getting ready to kick it out. And number 21, Gabe Clement. To Jackson Schroeder and Gabe Clement. So Kern's kick is off. And looks like Clement's going to receive it. And he runs up the middle, and he's going outside now. And he finds a hole, but he, Creighton Kern Creighton. is there to take him down. Horse and collar. Look, yeah, yep. going to call horse collar there, pretty evident. Obviously, Creighton doesn't have much experience tackling. Can't fully blame it on him, but. Yeah, clearly, ideally, you do not want to have your kicker uh, have all the pressure be on him to make the tackle. Right, what would you rather have, a penalty or? Six points right off the half. Yeah. Great starting field position here for Columbus Grove. They've got a great chance to put some points on the board. Like we said earlier in the first half, number 81, Reese Verhoff, the kicker for the Bulldogs. He has range. Kicks him about 50 to 60 yards in practice. So Blake Reynolds, their big quarterback, is in shotgun to receive the snap. He does so, and he's it's a pitch to Gabe Clement, and he cuts it up, and he gets a good yard. He gets a good gain there, about nine yards. Nice start for the Bulldog offense. So it's now second and two, it looks like. So just off the half, Columbus Grove has great field position. Blake Reynolds is looking to march them down to about 20 yards that they need to score. So he receives a snap and it's going to be a handoff to Metzger. Yeah, this is a tough spot to be in if you're Archibald right off the gate second half. Big kickoff return for Columbus Grove. Puts them in a tough position to defend here on uh, down by the streaks, about 20. Heard Caden Alvarado's name on the tackle. Both he and Carson Meyer lead the streaks in tackles on the year. Metzger has 94 yards on the day, rushing. It's been a big factor. And Reynolds is going to fake pitch and bring it up the middle. And he gets a good few yards there. Nice play by the quarterback. So Blake Reynolds is looking to receive the snap on second down, and he gets the first, it looks like. This is going to be first and goal. For the Bulldogs. Yeah, not quite enough for the touchdown, but definitely enough to pick up the first down. I believe first and about three yards to go for the Bulldogs. Once again, here in Caden Alvarado's name on the tackle. First and goal now. So Bulldogs try to score. And the snap is going to be a handoff to Metzger. And he's brought down. Nice tackling by the blue streaks there. Looked like Carson Meyer and DJ Newman were in there to wrap him up. 
Looks like looks like Devin Morris. Yeah, I think, down. I think that's, that's a huge Devin. loss for Archibald. Yeah, we've heard his name been called a couple times today. Obviously, JB mentioned earlier in the game his impact on the Blue Streak's defense. Yeah, he's, he's huge for their for their defense, and this one didn't look too good. So Devin gets up and he's walking. It looks like looks like his right leg is hurting. He is walking though, so that is a good sign. Looks like Zeke Miller is going to be his replacement. You know, we'll see how that loss impacts the streaks defense. We know that Zeke is a very capable defender right. who's able to make plays for the streaks. So we'll see what happens on second down here. And it's going to be a handoff to Metzger. And he is down at the one yard line, it looks like. And it wrapped up very close to the goal line. More than likely four down territory, I'm guessing, if you're Columbus Grove. They went for it earlier in the game or in this area. I would definitely not be surprised if they go for it again. Okay, so like you mentioned, Zeke is a very capable defender. He is actually fourth in total tackles for our Blue Streaks defense. Yeah, that's the great thing about this Streaks team is it's deep. They have guys who can get in there when an injury like this unfortunately happens and they can have just the same amount of impact. Right. So Blue Streak fans are stomping their feet, trying to hold them on this third down, and he's going to score. Nice job there by Columbus Grove, jumping right over the pile. That was a huge play. Big play by the big quarterback there, Blake Reynolds. So it is going to be 13-7. to Bulldogs lead the Blue Streaks. Huge opening drive that was started off on that kick return, which set up the Bulldogs in great field position and a really nice run, uh, jumping over the pile to get into the end zone. Right. See Reese Verhoff here, Columbus Grove's kicker, looking to score point after touchdown attempt. And he does. It's going to be seven to 14, Columbus Grove lead, with eight minutes and 24 seconds left to go in the third quarter. That drive was seven plays for 25 yards uh, for th in three minutes and 36 seconds. Obviously, it wasn't a lot of ground to gain after that large kick return plus uh, penalty on the Blue Streaks. All the fans of this game might want to move their parked cars now that Beerhoff's kicking them to the south end of the field. So in the third quarter of play, C Colonel Crawford is leading Fairview 27 to 14. I see the winner of this game will play the winner of those two teams. Ohio State fans, Ohio State is winning 14 to three against Penn State in the first quarter. Taylor and Cruz back for the streaks. Bearhouse kick is off, and it's going to be on the ground. And oh, Jaden Schultz looks looked like, like he had it at first. Columbus Grove is confident, and that is a huge play wow. for the Bulldogs. Looked like Jaden Schultz sec secured that, then he dropped it. That is unfortunate for the streaks. Huge play for Columbus Grove, as they have now taken all the momentum right. in this game. Blue Street fans are being very quiet now. Obviously. Yeah, you know Verhoff's big leg. I was just mentioning. I'm kind of surprised they didn't kick it out of the back of the end zone, but clearly that was the better play for the Bulldogs. Caught him off guard. I don't think they were ready for that. Obviously, it caught Schultz off guard. So now it is Columbus Grove's ball again. 
It looked like he was surprised that he was going to get the ball there because right. I thought he had it at first. Right. Wasn't able to reel it in. And now for the Blue Streaks, you got to – their defense is probably tired having to come right back out after just right. giving up a touchdown. Yep, so Blue Streaks defense. First and ten, Metzger gets the rush, and he's – Looks like there's a flag yeah, on the play, like and it looks like Charlie Krieger there is a flag. might be hurt. He's laying on the ground. So another huge loss for the Blue Streaks defense. Yeah, we'll As see. You see Devin Morris is back in the lineup. Archibald trainer However, Charlie Krieger down is a huge loss for Archibald. Archibald trainer Tina Stanley out there to check in on Charlie, make sure he's okay. That is not promising for Archibald, obviously. Charlie is a huge piece for the Archibald defense. Looks like the flag was a face mask on the streaks. It's just adding on to the hurt there for the blue streaks. Penalties continue to hurt the streaks throughout this game. So Krieger is not getting up. Isn't looking good for the Blue Streaks defense. Archibald has five penalties for 35 yards on the game. It's clearly been killer. To Columbus Groves, two. <coughs> so Chuck is up. Looks like he's able to walk off on his own power. make a correction on those penalties. It's now six penalties on the blue streaks for 50 yards. Uh, Columbus Grove continues to march down the field. So Blake Reynolds Sends Clem in motion. It's going to be another pitch. Obviously, when you see Clement going into motion behind the quarterback like that, they've done that a few times in the game. So you can tell that it's either going to be a rush or that trick play that they tried earlier in the first half. Looked like that was Carter Bainfelt in the tackle. So it's second and one now for the Bulldogs. And momentum is in their favor still. It's another pitch to Metzger. He gets the first down and more. That's He's be a in. Touchdown. Yeah, that was very easy running for Metzger on that play. And what a way to start the second half if you're Columbus Grove. That right. two touchdowns in just about six minutes. Right, so now the Blue Streaks are down by two touchdowns to Columbus Grove right out of the second, uh, right out of halftime. So we'll see what happens, what Coach Dominic tries to do to combat this uh, Columbus Grove defense. You know the Streaks have comeback potential coming back from down 21 zip against Wasion earlier in the year. But the way this Columbus Grove team is playing, it's, look like, it's looking like it's going to be difficult for the Blue Streaks going forward. Right. So, Merhoff, who we've been praising all night, has missed the PAT and is 7 to 20. Columbus Grove could end, up being, could end up being a big miss for Columbus Grove if the Streaks are able to get a couple of touchdowns up on the board. So, that drive was four plays for 44 yards in a minute and six seconds off of that uh, kickoff that they returned themselves. Maintain possession, obviously getting another touchdown. So now we'll see what happens. Bearhoff's probably going to kick it deep this time. Taylor and Cruz look like they're going back for the Blue Streaks. See if Archibald's, Archibald's kickoff unit will be a little bit more prepared here. Back to the Blue Streaks, number three, Antonio Cruz, and number five, Brandon Taylor. So Colin Metzger. He's got 17 rushing attempts for 112 yards. Obviously, it's been a big game for Metzger. He 
He also has a reception for 23 yards, obviously getting that first down there in the first half for Columbus Grove. So now he kicks it to Taylor, and Taylor's going to receive it and run down the sideline. He gets a he gets Oh, he's got a hole! Oh! And he's brought down at about the 37. Just brought down. It looked like he had a chance to break that one loose. Nice tackle by, I think it was number six, Zach Reynolds for Columbus Grove. So it's first and ten, Blue Streaks balls. Newman runs to call the play for the streaks. Carson Myers there to uh, send the snap. They're in Tripp's left formation with Taylor. Dominic and Cruz on his left side and Noah Gomez in his back. He's rolling left and he looks and he's going to cut it backfield, which he does so often. And he's going to pass it to, no, no one is incomplete. Targeted was Brandon Taylor, it looked like. TJ dancing around in the backfield, trying to make something out of that play. Looked like he made a ha might have had Brandon for a minute, but not quite. So again, it is 7 to 20. With seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. See, it's not too big of a point differential for Archibald Blue Streaks, obviously. They've proved their potential of coming back, proved the strength of their offense earlier in the year and Newman is going to have the option to pitch to Holgrave it looks like, but he's gonna keep it. And he's drawn out of bounds at about the uh, about a six yard gain there. Nice job by DJ, good blocking once again for the Blue Streaks. Something notable, Antonio Cruz, number three for the streaks, only has two catches for one yard on the day. We know how good he is and how good he can be. Plenty of time left in this game, though. Right, right. Last week during uh, against Carey, he got off to a slow start, just like tonight. So hopefully for the Blue Streaks, he can prove his potential and do something good for the Blue Streaks. So on third down there, Holgrave is the receiver. And he's brought down for a loss. Yeah, great tackling by number 56, Ezra Jones for Columbus Grove. That was a big play. Looked like the screen had a chance to pop there, but great defense by the Bulldogs. So it's now fourth down for the streaks. See what Coach Dominic does. It looks like Newman is going to be in shotgun, but he can always move back and punt it being the quarterback and punter for the Blue Streaks, and it looks like he's gonna take it himself. And he moves back and he's gonna punt it. It's a low snap, and he gets it off anyway. Looks like a pretty solid punt here. And if D'Antonio gets down there, it's gonna be a nice punt on the 10 yard line, so. Good off job. the low snap, DJ perseveres and kicks it off to the 10 yard line. Great, great punt there. So it's 7-20, to 20, Columbus Grove. Yeah, the way this Columbus Grove offense has been cooking in the start of the second half, we'll see if field position even really matters. Total offense, the... Columbus Grove Bulldogs have now overtaken the streaks in terms of total yards. They have 174 yards compared to 173 for the streaks. So there's flag on the flag. flag. Streaks are pointing to Columbus Grove. Looks like false start. So that's good for the blue streaks. Gonna be 15 yards now, so five yard loss. So it's gonna be first and 15 now. Ball on the five I'll tell you what, if you're the streaks, nothing would be bigger than the safety here now that you've got them pushed back to their own end zone. So Reynolds is going to keep it, and Carter Bainfell is going to meet him there and nice bring him tackle. down on about the 11-yard line. Great job there. Yeah, real nice tackle by Carter. So it looked like freshman there, Mason Siegel, was kind of getting held, but there was no call, and... Obviously, he would have been there for the streaks on that outside run. He's filling in for Charlie Krieger, who we mentioned got hurt, and he is now taking his spot. So 
So it's second and nine now for the Bulldogs. Blake Reynolds is in shotgun. And he calls a snap. You can hear the clap. Gavin Chapman running after him, doesn't get him. Carter Bainfeld's running after him. Noah Gomez and Carter Bainfeld and Noah Gomez will bring him down. Finally, at about the 35-yard line, so big gain there. Once again, excellent running by Columbus Grove. These guys are starting to really tear up the Blue Streaks defense. 24-yard gain. First and 10, Columbus Grove ball with four minutes left in the third quarter. Streaks are down seven to 20. Metzger now has 136 yards on the game. Big game for him. Reynolds cuts up, but he's met. At about the line by it looks like Gavin Schaffner, it looked like. Nice tackle by Gavin. Gain. Second and eight. Leaves a second and eight for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs here. So now it's going to be second and eight. Blake Reynolds back in shotgun for Columbus Grove. calls a snap and it's gonna be a pass a little pressure but nothing Brandon Taylor it is caught what a wow. catch my goodness number wow. 21 that's Gabe, Gabe Clement. Clement wow he just what a catch a nice throw by Blake Reynolds yeah. right over Brandon Taylor great job for Columbus right in the right spot for Clement to just grab the ball out of the air and snag it down Reynolds pr proving he can rip it down the field Reynolds showing that he can do it all for the Bulldogs. That was a 37-yard pass from Reynolds to Clement. And for the streaks, you got to do anything to get some momentum back here, possibly holding the Bulldogs to a field goal. Calls a snap, and he's going to be a pitch to Metzger. Metzger cuts up, and he's brought down finally. About the line of scrimmage by, looks like, Zeke Miller. Good tackling by Zeke on that play. He's now second and about eleven. He sends Clement in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Metzger. And Metzger is finally brought down by Carson Meyer. Yeah, Carson kind of came out of nowhere behind him and was able to grab him by the feet, take him down. So it's now third down. See what the Columbus Grove coach whip up there. It's going to be another flag. Looks like this one is on the blue streaks. Yet another flag for the blue streaks. Clearly killing the streaks all night long, the penalties are. It's, it's been big. Seven penalties for 55 yards that the streaks have given up. Reynolds taking the snap on first and ten. It's going to be a pitch to Metzger. And he's brought down by Carson Meyer at the one yard line. Very close to scoring there was Metzger. Continues to add on to his already fantastic day. Fourteen yard run for Metzger there. The last thing you want if you're the streaks is to give up a touchdown here. I know it's I'm stating the obvious, but if you make this a three-score game with only about 50 seconds to go in the third quarter, I mean, we can't doubt this blue streak offense, but that is a tough mountain to climb. There's not much to do in the fourth quarter, obviously. 
It's going to be very tough to make up three touchdowns if they score here, which they do. Metzger's in Walks for a touchdown. In. Yeah, that was very easy for Metzger. Yeah, it looks like he hopped over the line almost. You talk about having a day. Metzger having a great day here right. in playoff football. Big players showing up when the moment gets bigger. So with 35 seconds left, Metzger makes it 26 to 7. Columbus Grove is winning in Archbold, Ohio. Look at the Blue Streak sideline. They're all just kind of shocked. I mean, I mean, I think we expected the streaks to put up a lot of points today. Still plenty of time to go. Um, but overall, the Blue Streak sideline and their fans very quiet. Right. That drive was eight plays for 90 yards in four minutes and 46 seconds. So we'll see what Archibald can do to combat that drive there. Yeah, looking like no matter where Columbus Grove starts on offense, they're going to be able to march down the field. All right, obviously Archibald hasn't really been able to get things going here. So only having one touchdown. Massive drive for the Blue Streaks. Some might say this is a must-score drive. Talk about Metzger having a day. 22 carries for 156 yards, averaging 7.1 per carry, and he has two rushing touchdowns. Huge day for number 27. Also, he has one reception for 23 yards. So Antonio Cruz and Brandon Taylor back for the Blue Streaks once again. Looking to receive off this kickoff. Try to get things going for the Blue Streaks offense. So it's on the ground once again. And it looks like Carter Bainfeld's going to field this one. He slips a little bit and he's going to be down at about the 34 yard line. DJ and company starting at their own 35. See if they can put something together to pull them back into this football game. Looks like it's going to be a pass by Newman. He's looking. He's going to be fumble. There's a fumble on the play. And Ball's it's out. Recovered by Columbus Grove. Looks like Carson Meyer said he had it, but I'm not sure. I, I saw Columbus Grove players falling at first, but Carson Meyer has the football right now. Obviously, that wrestling strength. He still has it. They're staying out on the field. Looked like DJ wanted to take a shot deep down the field. Right. Didn't have enough time. Looked like he was cocking back almost and they got hit out. Say, do say that Archibald was able to recover it. Carson Meyer, great job by the senior linebacker and center. Fortunate for the Blue Streaks offense. Obviously that would have been horrible. Start of the fourth quarter, we haven't seen the streaks in a situation like this all season long. They're used to being on the other side of these semi-blowout games. At the end of three quarters of play, it's Columbus Grove, 27 on the edge for Blue Streaks, seven. Fairview. Colonel Crawford gave. Colonel Crawford is leading 27-14 still in the third quarter. Obviously the winner of this game play the winner of that game. Looks like we have a blowout in Coldwater and West Jefferson. Coldwater has 42 points on the board to West Jefferson, zero obviously. Last year we played, uh, Archibald played cold water playoffs. So Newman is back for the Blue Streaks. And it's going to be another pass. He looks for Antonio Cruz. Looks like he's going to pick up the first down. That's nice ripped by DJ there. Out to Cruz. It's his third catch of the game. Obviously, we're looking at a slow game for Antonio. Obviously, he's 
normally has more rece receptions this late in the game. Hasn't been able to be targeted lately in this game. Columbus Grove's defense has been very strong here. So Newman cuts up and he's going to pocket it and run. He runs up the middle and he gets a very good gain there. Looks like number he's one, a little Jackson, slow to get up. Jackson Schroeder was in there on the tackle. Nice 17-yard gain there by the quarterback, proving that Reynolds is not the only running quarterback on this field. Streaks have to get things going here, down three touchdowns. Yeah, a couple of nice plays to start the fourth quarter. So Newman drops back to pass again. Obviously, you like to see this with the Archibald. Oh, it's going to be picked off. Worst case scenario for the streaks. Just popped right out of Cruz's hands. Wow. And you're almost thinking, I don't want to say it this early, but you're almost thinking that could be the nail in the coffin. That is heartbreaking for the streaks, who were putting together a great drive. All right, obviously. Like I was starting to mention, you want to see that passing offense from the streaks. Obviously, it's been so strong this whole year. Newman proving he has an arm. But that ball was just, just yeah, looked, popped like out just of Antonio's hands, yeah. right into the hands of. It looked like DJ really reared back and whipped that one in there. Right. I wondered if maybe Antonio thought it was coming in slower and just wasn't able to handle it. I don't know. Joe Coley, number 58 for Columbus Grove with that pick. I believe that's DJ's fifth on the year. So Columbus Grove, first and 10. Ball on about the 41 yard line. And it's going to be a keeper by Blake Reynolds. And he cuts up the middle, but he finds about four yards there on that gain. I couldn't quite see who was in on that tackle. Sounds like Caden Alvarado was in on that tackle. So Blake Reynolds sees a snap. And it can be a handoff to Metzger, but he's brought down. Yeah, you see Metzger fighting through some tackles there. Something he's been doing all day long for the Bulldogs in the running game. Caleb Ranzal is there for the Blue Streaks. Also, Charlie Krieger, who's back in the game after that injury in the third quarter. Yeah, good to see no matter what the outcome of this game is for the Streaks. Good to see Charlie back on the field healthy. So is now third, third down for Columbus Grove, and he hands it off to Metzger. Metzger gets maybe about a yard, but it's brought down by the Blue Streaks line. Looks like the Blue or the Blue Streaks, the uh, Bulldogs are going to try and maybe run some clock down with about nine and a half to go in the fourth quarter, you know, trying to limit the Streaks possessions. So fourth down, only eight pass attempts for Reynolds so far. So it looks like they're sending in their punting formation now. It's Reese Verhoff. We've seen Verhoff has the ability to pin the streaks back. You know, obviously Antonio knows that and he's back deep for the blue streaks. You see some confusion on the field there. And another whistle. All right, talk this one over. I truly don't know what this issue is about, I'm going to be honest. Yeah.
So total number of plays, Columbus Grove has 49 to Archibald's 35. So we've seen them milk a lot of time on the clock and be able to use up most of the time. See, I think it was an issue with the play clock. It's like they're wasting time here. It's about 10 seconds now. And Clearly that's what you're looking to do if you're Columbus Grove, just chew clock, keep Bear the ball out of DJ's hands. Kicks it deep into the end zone, so they're just going to let that one go. Now we'll see what Archibald Blue Streaks can kick up. Yeah, we'll see if DJ can cook up a miracle here. Down by 20 with 8.22 to go. Going to need three touchdowns. We'll see if the streaks will even get the ball back three times. So DJ is 9 for 15 on passing for 70 yards and one touchdown. He also has one interception. Obviously a slower game than he's used to. So now trips right for the Blue Streaks, it looks like. Gavin Bailey, Carson Dominic, and Antonio Cruz there. And it's going to be a pass. DJ Newman is rolling right. And he backs to his left. Great protection. Does all the time. And he tucks it, and he's going to run. And he is brought at about the line of scrimmage. So it's a gain of no yardage on that play. Streak's going to try and take some shots down the field. That is the one good thing about the Streak's trailing by this much. You'll get to see DJ probably launch the ball down the field a few times. Should be fun to watch. Now obviously, like I said earlier in the game, that's what you want to see in this Blue Streak's offense. Actually, Columbus Grove has been stopping them earlier, early in the game, and we'll see DJ pocketed again and is brought down. I think that was 57, Clay Bonnell. So Columbus Grove's defense has been proving to be a huge part of their game here. We'll see what happens now. This is another pass. So DJ Newman is back in shotgun. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to look for Brandon Taylor, it looks like. But he looks for Noah Gomez. He only gets about two yards on that play, on that reception. Streak's going to have to go for it here with Hope looking slim. All right, so it is fourth down now for the Blue Streaks. Obviously, the Archibald fans are quiet. Hopes are down, like JB said. And we'll see what happens. So DJ is back. Looks like they're gonna throw it wide. Their wide receivers are spread out. And Newman unleashes to Taylor and it's gonna be incomplete. So turnover on downs for the Blue Streaks once again. It's going to be Columbus Grove ball at about the 30 or about the 24 yard line. And yeah, give credit to Columbus Grove's fans too. Like I said, not a ton of them here, but they're pretty loud and they're very happy for their Bulldogs. I think most of the Archibald fans are in shock. I mean, obviously you're gonna meet great teams late this late in the playoffs, but Blake Reynolds can milk the clock. Metzger gets another big game. Yeah, they're just going to keep running it right down the Blue Streak's throat here to finish things out. Give credit to their running game. Colin Metzger oh, came through. Right. Big game for Metzger. Second down now. Milk the clock with another run. Putting the ball in the air would be something that they would not want to do as they have not done it much this game. And Metzger gets it again but is, <sighs> wow. Look at Metzger this running, oh again. my gosh. That was wow. mean. That was one of the fiercest runs I've seen all season. Colin Metzger, wow, that was I mean, fantastic. My that's goodness. What, 
looked like what Noah Gomez has been doing all season, but 15 yard touchdown for Metzger. Wow. It looked like he was going to get taken down the backfield. Right. And he just unleashed his inner Marshawn Lynch. Incredible run there by Metzger. He's, like we've mentioned all game, he's had a great game. So Verhaas, PAT is good. It is now 34 to 7. Blue streaks are down with 5 minutes and 24 seconds left in the game. That drive was two plays for 23 yards in 54 seconds. Hey, you talk about Columbus Grove wanting to take time off the clock. Only 54 seconds, but clearly they're going to take the seven points. Right, and for that short of yardage, I mean, that's pretty good for how little they had to go. And obviously, ending with a great run by Metzger there, 15 yard. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the Archbold Foundation for their generous donation for PPE and technology to allow us to upgrade our equipment and continue to offer the community of Archbold a way to experience athletic and extracurricular activities during this challenging time. So Verhoff set to kick off again for the Blue Streaks, Antonio Cruz and Brandon Taylor back for the Blue Streaks. is off and it's going to be well into the end zone again. So, obviously, like we've said, it's been a game for number 27, Colin Metzger. 26 carries for 180 yards and three touchdowns. DJ Newman is in shotgun. It's going to be a handoff to Noah Gomez who runs it up the middle. Some good hard running for Noah. Noah. Metzger has over 200 of the yards for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have 291 yards overall. He's been their offense all day today and the streaks have not been able to stop him. So Noah Gomez running on the sideline, gets a few yards, and he's taken down at about the 39-yard line. Nice little gain there. Yeah, good blocking by the Blue Streaks. They've had good blocking all day. Still running here. All three timeouts left for the streaks. See if they even bother to use them. So Newman set to pass. Brandon. Carson Dominic, the reception there. And the ball is the loose. Ball is loose. Wow. Looks like that is going to be another fumble. I'm not sure if they're going to calm down or not. We'll see if they call that a reception or not. Or if they call that down or not. Archibald fans think he's down. And they say he was down. So no insult will be added to injury on that play. So Newman is back for the Blue Streaks in first and ten. He's going to pass to Antonio Cruz, who gets flipped. Nice tackle by number two, Blake Reynolds, the quarterback, wow. showing he can play defense. He's been very impressive tonight, showing he can pass, run. Obviously, they haven't had many pass plays, but when they have, he's shown some 
Nice plays. So the blue streaks now second in about six. Newman looks and he's going to keep it and run up the field. And he's finally brought down at about 22 yard line. So nice gain there by Newman. Real good pickup for DJ. There's three minutes left to play in this game. Archibald first and 10. Newman takes the snap. He's going to pass. He's looking for Taylor. He throws it deep, and that's beautiful gonna be throw. That's going to be a touchdown. It's not really going to mean too much, but that's a nice throw from DJ. Very nice, very nice pass there. Adding one more touchdown to Taylor's name. It's a high school career. It's going to be 13 to 34, Columbus Grove lead, leading with two minutes and 56 seconds left in the game. And yeah, the senior Brandon Taylor gets to close out his high school career with a real nice receiving touchdown. Bittersweet, obviously we saw him his sophomore year take the reign of the Blue Streaks offense and at quarterback and then last season switching to wide receiver with DJ being quarterback so that drive was six plays for 80 yards in two minutes and 28 minutes showing everybody what Archibald's offense is capable of doing obviously we've seen it all year Six to go on this Grove, looking to possibly end the game on this drive. So in the fourth quarter of the Fairview Colonel Crawford game, Colonel Crawford is leading 27 to 21. We'll see what happens there. The winner of this game will play the winner of that game. So Newman has 13 rushing attempts for 124 yards. Obviously, it's been a great game on the ground for him, as well as in the air. It's 13 for 20 for 116 passing yards and two touchdowns. This wasn't enough for the Blue Streaks. So Creighton Kern is setting up for the onside kick. I've heard he's a great onside kicker in practice, but they haven't really had that many chances where they should do it in games, so it's like, like they're it just gonna take it. Nice Jackson recovered by Schroeder. Yeah, Jackson Schroeder on that play. Good job by the Columbus Grove hands team. Archfield coach is telling their guys, trying to rip the football out. It's the only way that a miracle would happen here is if the streaks can force multiple turnovers. Yep. So Columbus Grove is sending their first team in. Blake Reynolds sends the snap. Oh my, oh my goodness. Gosh. Wow. Carson, Carson Meyer. Holy cow. He wants to end his high school career with a bang, literally. That was a huge hit. Trying to get a little bit of revenge on this Columbus Grove running game. Showing his true potential, obviously. He's hurt a little bit last week against Carey and played despite his injury. This week, he's had a really good game for Archibald's defense. Just hasn't really been able to stop them. Probably a little bit of frustration taken out on that hit, too. Yeah. Blake Reynolds gets a snap. Hands it off to Metger again, and a fumble. Wow, the ball is loose. I think the streak's got I it. Think, I think they laid on it. And that is going to be Noah Gomez on the fumble recovery. A little bit of life still here for the Blue Streaks. Down by 20 they points. Down by three touchdowns. However, there are two minutes left to go. and So it's going to be 34 still to 14. Change of possession. It's going to be Blue Streaks ball. We'll see what DJ can cook up here in the last two minutes of this ball game. Yeah, that's the only thing that could have possibly gone wrong for Columbus Grove. They're still in an excellent spot, obviously, but I give the Blue Streak some life. Oh. 
So Newman's back in shotgun. I guess they'll go with a pass play right away. And they do. And Newman's going to keep it, actually. And he's going to get a few yards. He jukes one person, gets down at about, looks like, seven or eight yards. On that rush. Designed, designed QB run. DJ getting a decent pickup. And DJ looks is like down. Looks like he's actually hurt, which and that is, is not good. Yeah, last thing you want. Yeah, obviously. Less than two minutes left in the season almost. I mean, it's not only bad for the football team, it's bad for basketball and baseball as DJ is a terrific three-sport athlete for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, this is the last thing that Archibald head basketball coach Joe Frank wants. Not a good way to end this game. Looks like he's going to stand up and he's walking himself off. Looks like maybe it's DJ's arm that he's favoring, walking off this field. Looks like Caleb Polgrave is going to be the Archibald quarterback this last this last drive here. Yeah, obviously Caleb filled in for DJ when DJ was hurt earlier in the season at quarterback. So Holgrave is going to pass it, throwing it back to his middle school days, and he runs and it's going to be. Incomplete. Right through the hands. Didn't quite see who dropped it. So the Fairview Colonel Crawford game has just been tied up by Fairview. It's 27 all. Actually, looks like Columbus Grove will play the winner of that game, so it'll be interesting to see what happens and happens there. Gunner King, number 65 for Columbus Grove all day, has been putting pressure up the middle. So Caleb floats one into Brandon, it looks like, and it's going to be caught. Yeah, nice catch there. Down. Somehow reeled it in, got whacked. Nice senior to senior connection there. So Caleb's running off the field to get the call from Coach Dominic. There is a minute left, a minute and 23 seconds left in the game. Columbus Grove surprising everybody with their 34 to 14 lead here minute to go. Yeah, we all knew Columbus Grove was a very good, capable football team. Uh, Archibald ranked a little bit higher in the state. But the, just the fact that they're winning by 20 right. points, I think, is what the Archibald fans were not expecting. Right. Great effort by Columbus Grove. So Holgrave back to pass again. And he looks for it. You know, Gomez, and he's loose. And Gomez cuts upfield, and he's going to be loose. Made mess. Yep. So Jackson Schroeder finally takes him down at about the six-yard line. Mm -hmm. Nice so job we'll by see. Noah. If the Blue Streaks can close this game in another touchdown, hopefully. Streaks clearly not giving up, trying to get some points on the board at the end of the game. So Holgrave is going to pass once again for the Blue Streaks, and he floats it in. It's going to be incomplete. Looks like. Archibald fans are complaining about the refs missing a pass interference call, it looked like. However, at the end of the day, there was no call there. So clock at two, snap has to get off, and it just does just in time. Caleb cuts up, and he's going to keep it. He gets down at about the five-yard line. Looks like the streaks are going to use a timeout. I think David Dominic really wants to get seven more points on the board here before the end of the season.
Vigs have been three for ten on third downs all day. As to Columbus Groves, five for eleven. Total offense numbers. Columbus Grove with 297 yards on the day compared to Archibald's 294. So clearly yards haven't been the problem for the streaks. They just have not been able to get those big turnovers or those big touchdowns when needed. And also on kick returns has been better for uh, Columbus Grove so far. So DJ Newman is back and he flips it to Noah Gomez and Noah Gomez is going to score. It's in for a touchdown. Great job by Noah Gomez. Way to finish off a fantastic high school career. Obviously number 24. Right, we saw him as a freshman come in at DB. And then sophomore he took the reins starting uh, running back and he has just been phenomenal for the Blue Streaks his whole career. So it's nice to see him finish off with one last touchdown. Looks like Kern missed the PAT there. Keeps it a 14 point game. Drive was seven plays for 57 yards in a minute and 24 seconds. So Archibald marching down the field fast again. Just too late in the game. Obviously there's 41 seconds left in the game. Streaks are down 20 to 34. Set to onside kick again. And Holgrave, wow, that was, oh man. That was a really nice so play. So close, that was a, a, an amazing play. They had it, and Gavin yeah, Bailey dropped on the ball, but wasn't able to pick it up. That is unfortunate for Gavin Bailey. They wow. executed that. That was a perfectly phenomenal play there. That was, wow. Caleb Holgrave getting to end off his high school career with a kick. <laughs> yeah, wow. will run out here in Archibald. Got to give credit where credit is due. Columbus Grove came into Archibald's house right out of the gate. Both teams were pretty evenly matched, but it's the start of that second half for Columbus Grove, which really decided this football game. Exactly. Just want to give a shout out to all the Archibald seniors on a great four years. Yep. It's like great sportsmanship there by Columbus Grove. Overall, great year for the Blue Streaks. Right. Just coming short in playoffs. It's their only loss of the season. Uh, they hadn't really seen a team like Columbus Grove yet this season. A team that could really compete with them. All right, the most versatile uh, team since Wauseon, probably. It seemed like a season that seemed like it was never going to end. Hopeful, a hopeful state run for the streaks ended in a loss to Columbus Grove, 34 to 20. Great game by Columbus Grove. Obviously, they're a great team, and no one, maybe Columbus Grove fans, were expecting that.
So at the end of the game, uh, Colin Metzger was the guy for Columbus Grove. 26 rushing attempts for 180 yards. That's a phenomenal rushing game for Colin there. Yeah, go along with three touchdowns for Metzger, number 27. He was the uh, difference maker for the Bulldogs all day long. Streets couldn't stop him, and therefore we see they won 34 to 20. Right, obviously. Uh, hard to stop a guy like that. Also, Blake Reynolds had uh, only three I mean, eight attempts, three completions for 73 yards on the passing. So, I mean, I don't know. It was a great game by Columbus Grove. DJ uh, was 13 for 20. Uh, great passing game for him again, 116 yards. And Caleb Holgrave uh, filling in for DJ when he was hurt. Caleb had, was two for four for 42 yards. On that one of the last drives there, DJ had two TDs. And then Noah Gomez and DJ Newman were the leading rushers. DJ had 132 yards, and Noah had 39 and one touchdown. So, yeah, um, it's a case of too little, too late for the Blue Streaks. They got something going there at the very end of that fourth quarter. Um, just not enough to topple this Bulldog team. All right. I'd like to, like JB said, give a special thanks to the seniors on a great four years. Uh, also. A thanks to Mrs. Bickle on the camera, Mr. Vall here behind me, and Mr. Throne, and our principal, Mr. Short, for letting this broadcast happen. Uh, I'm Brady Johns. I'm J.B. Burkle. Thanks for tuning in.